Good morning. Good morning. Oh, we can do better than that. It's Men's Day. Good morning. Good morning. We want to welcome you this morning to our very special service this morning. That's right. Good morning. <laughs> we want to welcome you to our very special service this morning. More on that in a, in a minute. I'm just up here to give you a few announcements. Tomorrow night, not Tuesday night, tomorrow night in our Family Life Worship Center, our women's ministries will be having their secret sister reveal. So if you participated in Secret Sister, please join the ladies tomorrow night, tomorrow night, at 6 o'clock in our Family Life Worship Center. Um, on Tuesday, September the 5th, will be the regularly scheduled women's ministries meeting. Uh, that's one week earlier, but we, so please note that date. Uh, Tuesday, September the 5th at 6 o'clock is going to be our regularly scheduled women's ministries meeting. We also want to remind you... Um, and you've seen it in our bulletin that our pastor so lovingly puts together. He does a great job on these. On Saturday, September the 2nd, we'll be having a church membership class. So if you are interested in being a church member, please don't just show up that day. Please get with Pastor Chris, and he'll go over the particulars with you um, about that. It is Saturday, September the 2nd at 11 a.m. Um, we would love for you to join our church. There are just some things you have to do. We have to, you know, get your blood and some other oaths and, you know, all that good stuff. No, no, it's nothing like that, I promise. Um, but Pastor Chris would love to talk to you about that, and we'd love to have you join the best church in the Macedonia community. That's right. So please, please, if you're interested, see Pastor Chris about that. Um, we also want to mention that homecoming is coming up. It is on Sunday, September the 10th. Sunday, September the 10th at 1030, and it is with the shepherds. We know that they're going to bless us as they minister to us in music, so please come join us Sunday, September the 10th at 1030 for that. And last but certainly not least, let's, a gentle reminder that um, the missions department is selling jewelry in the foyer uh, before and after our services. Please see Sister Glenda, and they're just selling it uh, by donation. And everything, all the proceeds benefit uh, missions. Oh, and today is the last day for that. So if you've been holding out, just kind of wait and see what's out there. Today is the last day, so please make a beeline for Miss Glenda um, after the church is over with. With that being said, I'll hand it over. There was one announcement that I neglected to put in the bulletin, and I neglected to tell Brother Ryan about, so it's not his fault. Don't blame him. Leave him alone. But... Um, you might remember last year we had started collecting diapers and baby wipes and that sort of thing for our annual diaper run. And um, it's just kind of come up on us again. So we're going to begin to collect diapers, uh, all sizes, right? And, and diapers and wipes uh, to give to the diaper run. And that goes to, is it Falcon or Turbyville that it goes to? A royal home, that's right. It's neither of them. It goes to the royal home. So... We're going to begin to uh, collect those uh, in the foyer. There'll be a box out there where you can just grab them and drop them off, or if you would prefer just to give some money towards it, or whatever is going to work best for you. But we want to make sure that we collect some. Uh, you know, we, we got quite a few last year, but you weren't ready for it. I hadn't given you enough time. So let's make sure that we collect that. And then on the 17th of September, that evening, at Life Givers Church in Monk's Corner, there's actually going to be a service that's going to come. And those of you who aren't aware of what the diaper run is, a bunch of guys on motorcycles driving and getting diapers and stuff, I guess, is what it comes down to. So, uh, but they're going to be having a service. We, it's a, a district thing. So come on out for that. That's going to be on Sunday, September 17th, that evening. We'll have something in the bulletin about it next week. I apologize. Uh, I ran out of room and didn't get a chance to put that in the bulletin. But I wanted to make sure to mention that. Ladies and gentlemen, Oak Grove's Men's Ministries Director, Ronnie Wiggins. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for everyone that came out today. What a beautiful crowd. Give yourselves a hand. My gosh. This is beautiful. Thank you. Well, so many thanks in place this morning. Thank you for all the men that took part in buying our shirts. Real quickly, would you just stand up for us? Everybody that has a shirt on Please stand now. We've got a little something planned for you later, and we'll do that. But thank you so much. Let's give them a hand. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. I talked to everyone I talked to about taking part in today's was more than generous. I, um, I talked to Steve, and I said, you know, I, I know how many Sunday school classes you got, but I really like a man in all of them. 
And we talked about it a little bit, and, he, and finally he, he just stopped. He said, look, I got it. I got it. I, we'll take care of that. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all the men that took part in Sunday school this morning, that, excuse me, that taught classes and stuff. Thank you for all the musicians. Thank you for Ed, our musician. Well, what it is is that uh, Brother David is actually doing uh, security today, and so I knew he wasn't going to be available for a piano, so I asked if Sister Ed would be willing to, um, to play. I mean, her name's Ed. So, she looks the part, but what, I, yet. what I didn't know was that she was going to have a shirt, that she was going to look a little bit less fabulous than usual, <laughs> because men don't look fabulous. But there is something missing, I feel like, uh, for your ensemble. So we've, we've gone ahead. You just peel the back off right there. You need some help with that? You got that? We want you to fit in, is what it is. We don't want you. Can you get it? You need help? Here, let me see if I can do this. Hold on. This is important. You know what, I think I just took the sticky off. <laughs> just hold it up there, let's see if we can get, at least get a picture. Yeah. Let's give her a hand, how about that? <laughs> For being a trooper. Yeah, the sticky stayed right there. <laughs> the sticky stayed on the peel back part, sorry. So yeah, thank you all for the cook part of the day and, and all that you are doing, I appreciate it. Um, Pastor Chris is gonna make formal introductions in a little bit, but thank you so much. Uh, visiting W.A. Mills, Brother DeMills, and his lovely wife, Tammy. Thank you for being with us today. It is such a pleasure for having you with us. I've got a little something to make you feel at home. I want to give you that now. This way, you know, you got to be a travel, Brother David. He travels all over the world. And we'll give you time right now to go change. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm going to turn it over to Brother Chris. All right. Stand this morning, if you would. We're going to go to the Lord and uh, praise and worship here in just a moment. But first, I want to open up with prayer. And uh, listen, we've been having prayer at 915 in the prayer room every Sunday morning uh, for the past several weeks now. And we have felt it in our services. Uh, we have definitely felt it in that room. And we have felt it in our services. And we're going to keep on doing it because we're, just, we're actually growing. And more and more people are, are catching uh, on to the idea that prayer changes things. Amen? Amen? Prayer changes things. Not just the kind of prayer where we're saying, Lord, give me, give me, give me. But the kind of prayer where we're offering up worship and praise and we're, we're seeking God. Amen? And so we're going to open up this service today. I know it's a special service. I know we have a special speaker and, and all of that. And that's all wonderful and marvelous. But what's really special is that this is the day that the Lord has made. What's really special is that this is His house. And we want His presence to be free in this place. Amen? Let's go ahead and open up with prayer this morning. Father, we come to You with grateful hearts, Father. Lord, for giving us this opportunity to be able to come into Your house, to fellowship together as a body. Lord, to be able to worship You in spirit and in truth. And Lord, we just pray in the name of Jesus. Father, that you will use us today as your vessels. God, that you will move through us as we lift up our praise and our worship. God, that you will move through us as we give in a, a worshipful manner, Lord. Father, I just pray that you will put your anointing and let it rest upon each and every head. Lord, help us to be not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. And Lord, we just pray, Father, that you will have your way in this service today. I pray you'll touch every need, Lord, everyone out there who is not able to be with us, is watching online because of sickness, or, or those that are struggling, those that are having difficult times, maybe they're here, but they're struggling. Lord, we're believing, Father, in the healing power of Jesus Christ. We're believing, Father, in the deliverance power of the Holy Spirit. We're believing, God, that you are the one who can break every chain and can let us worship in spirit and in truth and in freedom in this place. Let it be so, Father. And as we begin to sing our praises unto you, Lord, let us just glorify you and praise you with all that we do. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Remain standing. Don't you love my praise team today? Woo! We've been trying to get those ladies to coordinate with us and wear the same thing we are. None of them will wear a necktie. I don't know what their problem is. But, but anyway, let's go ahead and let's sing uh, this morning. Well, some glad morning when this life is o'er, I'll fly away. Oh, to a home on God's celestial shore, I'll fly away. Well, I'll fly away, oh, glory, I'll fly away. Oh, when I die, hallelujah, by and by. I'll fly away. Sing that chorus again. Oh, I'll fly away. Oh, glory. I'll fly away. Oh, when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Oh, when the shadows of this life have grown I'll fly away oh like a hope from prison bars has flown I'll fly away well I'll fly away oh glory I'll fly away when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Just a few more, oh, just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away. Oh, to a land where joy shall never end. I'll fly away, well, I'll fly away, oh, glory, I'll fly away, oh, when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away, sing it again, well, I'll Oh, glory, I'll fly away. Oh, when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Do that third verse one more time. Oh, just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away. Oh, to a land where joy shall never end, I'll fly away. Are you ready? Well, I'll fly away, oh, glory, I'll fly away. Oh, when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll time I fly away oh glory I'll fly away oh when I die hallelujah by and by I'll fly away oh by and by well by and by when the morning comes when all the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story how we've overcome, and we'll understand it better by and by. Sing it again, well, by and by. Understand it better by and by. 
Oh, I'll sing it now. Oh, by and by, when the morning comes, when all the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story how we've overcome, and we'll understand it better by and by. Oh, come on, we can sing it one more time. Oh, by and by, when the morning comes, when all the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story how we've overcome, and we'll understand it better by and by. Well, somebody give God a praise in this house. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. We're all looking forward to that day when we can be in the presence of Almighty God, where we can stand before Him face to face. But you know what? We can be in His presence this morning as well. Can we just lift up our hands and welcome Him into this house this morning? As we continue to sing, let's just continue to worship and just let the Holy Spirit know that He is welcome in this place. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father, Tell him he's welcome this morning. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father. To just welcome Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place, omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, thou art welcome in this. Can we sing it one more time as we welcome him in? Oh, Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father, Thou art welcome in this place. Come on and give the Lord a praise offering in this house this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You may be seated this morning. And let me tell you, it is not easy to sing with a mask on. I know you kept seeing me rip that thing down, and I kept sucking it up, and that's all right. I'm just trying to be safe, so anyway. We thank each and every one of you for being here today, and uh, Brother Ronnie was like, right, just such a beautiful-looking crowd that we have, and uh, thank each and every one of you for being here. Um, we also want to mention, uh, as Brother Ronnie said, look at all the beautiful shirts that were 
uh, that were purchased, and we found out yesterday when they were talking about the shirts that were on sale, we got a deal because <laughs> ours are way less. But anyway, and they look better. But, you know, I'm a little bit partial, so what can I say? But we're going to do something to make you extremely uncomfortable. If you have uh, one of these shirts on, we'd like you to come forward. We want to take a picture so that we can put it on our Facebook page. Now, you might say, oh, I don't want my picture took. Nobody asked. We're telling you. You didn't realize when you signed your name and picked up the, the thing, you didn't see the fine print that said, I also consent to be having my picture took on, on uh, men's ministry morning. So if all the guys that have uh, shirts on, or do you just want all the guys? You know what? Never mind. Even if you didn't buy a shirt, but you a guy, come on up. <laughs> ha ha. You thought, oh, thank God I didn't spend that 10 bucks. Well, now you got to come up anyway. So even if you didn't buy a shirt and we're going to now listen, we're going to have to scrunch in. We can't be doing no single file. We'll be out. We'll have to get one of them panorama cameras. So how about you little guys get in the front? There's a thought like Gary. No, I'm just kidding. I, was, I said those little guys and I said you. Believe it or not, folks, Brian isn't standing on a step. He's on the floor. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Let's, let's come on it. Y'all can get up on the platform. It's okay. I mean, it's holy. And well, not you guys. You guys are too short. You need to be in the front. You need to get in the front. But if there's any guys who would like to step up on the platform, it's fine. I mean, just, you're just going to be grabbing onto the holiness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hi, how you doing? Oh, I'll stay right here. That's fine. I'll be in the middle of it. Are you going to be able to get us all? Yeah, Brother Cheryl was just waiting for somebody to say, everybody else get in place so I can come in the center. I mean, I'm sorry? I know. You better pray Jesus calls it one day. Anyway, moving along from there. Here, Brother Mendel wants to be up here in the center too. Oh, yeah, they come in. They're going to take their time. It's fine. Don't worry. We're waiting on you guys. It's okay. I don't know why Brother Leonard ain't running. <laughs> <I've>, yeah, <laughs> Metal said he is. Are you going to be able to get us all, dear? All right. Are we ready? Are we good? Do we have all the men? We ain't got all the men, but we got all the ones that are willing. Okay. I don't even know why I'm smiling. <laughs> all right. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> Big dummy I am, I'm up here smiling. <laughs> I should have just stuck my tongue out. Nobody would have even known but me, you know? Praise team, you can be seated with your families. Thank you so much. God bless you. Not you guys. You guys stay right there. We got to still play for the offering. You guys. You, you guys. Guys. All right. <laughs> I'm telling you, isn't Sister at a sport? Yeah. I'll tell you what. She is so much fun. And I'm not saying that just because she's sitting here. I'd say it anyway. But you are so much fun. Thank you so much. Because I know it was killing you not to be all dolled up like you usually are. But instead. <laughs> oh, the church mouse or the... the Why don't you show us how you did that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah that, that illustration may take a little while, so it'll be all right. <laughs> anyway, but uh, praise the Lord. We're going to receive this morning's tithe and offering, and we're going to ask our ushers to come. But a couple of things I want to make mention to you. First of all, any, and I'm going to give you a little bit of time here, uh, because I know normally we already have our offerings ready. We're just ready to throw it in, in the bag and be done with it. But um, number one, our undesignated funds today are going to be going towards men's ministries. So anything that you give above that is not designated as tithe or offering, or where you don't designate it for a, a certain department, all of that is going to be going towards men's ministries. So whatever you can give will be a great blessing. I also wanted to mention, and, and I appreciate you bearing with me on this. I know that this is something that... Um, is close to my heart, and maybe you're not familiar with it, but that's okay. But uh, I had mentioned last week about um, 
an event that's happening in, in Savannah, Georgia with some ministry friends of ours uh, called The Stirring, as in like stirring a pot, uh, called The Stirring. It's a revival event. Basically what it is is that this young ministry couple, which I hope to get up here one day to minister with us, uh, that they are going into different cities as the Lord uh, moves upon them, and they're having revival events to try to bring church people in and help them to understand the gifts of the Spirit, not teaching tongues, not teaching how to do stuff, but trying to get them to seek God for the gifts of the Spirit. Because let me tell you, they're alive and well today, all right? Anybody who says that the gifts of the Spirit were only for the apostolic age, it was only for the disciples, just kind of kickstart the church, brother, we need the church kickstarted today, amen? And so, and this, this uh, young couple is, uh, they are just starving to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so if you would like to give towards that, and don't, don't, give, don't feel obligated or anything like that, but if you would like to give towards that, you can mark your offering as the stirring, or if you're giving uh, electronically, you can mark it as the stirring, and we will make sure it gets there. We're going to be taking up uh, offerings for that up until Wednesday, and then I have to send it off because uh, the event is actually going to be on September 8th, so that's coming up very quickly. But if you would like to give towards that, that's fine. But I do ask you, if you have any loose change, if you've got uh, just, you know, maybe a, a, an old George Washington that's just been looking all lonely, wondering what he was ever going to get used for and that sort of thing, anything that you can give towards men's ministries, I know it's going to be a blessing, and we appreciate you doing it. And I know that any time that we sow seed in the ground, we're going to see harvest come forth when it's good seed and good soil. Amen? And our men's ministries, that's some good soil right there. So let's go ahead and pray, and we're going to believe God's going to meet every need. Amen? Father, we thank you, Lord, for all that you have given us. Father, the way that you have blessed us, the way that you have provided for us, Lord, we can't thank you enough for all that you have done. And what we ask now in the name of Jesus is that you will just minister and bless this offering now as we give, Father. I pray we will give it as sowing seed into good soil and that we will see great and wonderful harvest come forth because of it. God, we're just believing that you're going to meet every need by your will, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we thank you for all these things. Amen. Amen. God bless you as you give today. fight be brave against all evil never run nor even lag behind if you would win for god and the right just keep on the firing line sing it with me oh you must fight be brave against all evil never run nor even lag behind if you would win for god and the right just keep on the firing line one more time oh you must fight be brave against all evil never run nor even lag behind if you would win for god and the right just keep on the firing line amen amen praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord thank you musicians what a wonderful job you did brother ed uh I was going to let her grow her own mustache, but I didn't give her enough time, so she, she would have done it for me, though. God bless her. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are delighted to have the privilege and the honor of being able to have uh, the general director for, or international director, not sure what the official title is, but he's the head honcho 
uh, for men's ministries for the IPHC. Uh, Brother W.A. Mills uh, has uh, just been a blessing to the organization. We have not had a chance to get to know each other yet a whole lot, uh, but hoping that will one day change. And uh, he, yesterday, he came to the men's conference in Lake City and uh, brought his security dog with him, which was very frightening. That monster looked like it was going to eat everyone in the room. What, it's some kind of a, a chihuahua? It's like a chihuahua poodle mix or something. It's a what? Oh, a Pekingese and a Chihuahua. So it's a, it's a Chicanese. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know what that would be. It, it's a dog. It was huge. It, it was like, what, about, it had to be at least five pounds, six pounds, five pounds. But teeth, teeth like, like staples. But anyway, uh, no, but we had, uh, he was, he just addressed the congregation yesterday. Had a great time at the men's conference. But we're so delighted to be able to have him and his lovely wife with us today, and, uh, and Cujo is at home, so uh, we're glad about that. But would you welcome uh, Brother W.A. Mills as he comes to speak for us today. And Brother Ronnie Wiggins, if you'll come back. Uh, it is a joy and an honor for Tammy, my wife, and I to be here with you today at Oak Grove Pentecostal Holiness Church. This is our first time ever in your community and in this local church, and we are honored and thrilled to be here with you. So thank you for the invitation. I want to give uh, honor to your pastor, Pastor Chris and First Lady Crystal. We thank you for the leadership you're giving this church. I understand you came, COVID brought you here. Maybe not directly, but <laughs> during a COVID year of 2020, and it looks like you're doing a phenomenal job. I've been invited to do a lot of men's days and in our churches across the nation, but I don't recall a church pulling out all the stops to the extent you have today. And I know that's for your leadership and Ronnie Wiggins' leadership and even getting shirts for all the men and using the men to teach the Sunday school classes and to lead the worship and then fudging a little bit. But I know why, because uh, our sister's such a great pianist, so... I can understand why you would want, to, want her to keep playing, a team player, yes. But I do have a book for you, and I bring greetings from Bishop Tommy McGee, the Executive Director of Discipleship Ministries. This book is entitled The Disciple Making Pastor, and that's for you, sir. And I have a Bible study to give to you, Ronnie, entitled Better Together, because discipleship happens uh, with one brother is taking another brother under his wings and pouring into him and mentoring him. So hopefully that will be a blessing to you. So thank you for your leadership, Ronnie. Thank you, Pastor. That's right. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, and yes, we did leave our killer dog behind. Not in the car. It's too hot to do that. But we made a special arrangements for the security detail today because I heard you have security here at the church and I didn't figure I would need Hachi's services here, here today. So you've got me covered. All right. But I am glad to have my wife Tammy with me. We were both widowed, and uh, after being married many years, uh, the Lord called our former spouses to heaven, promoted them, and in the providence of God, he brought us together. We are still newlyweds, and we'll, have, we'll celebrate two years the end of next month. She, she doesn't get to travel with me very often. But if it's somewhere in the Carolinas, uh, uh, close, fairly close to our home, uh, she's able to go with me. So I am just excited that she's here today. And it's good to see a dear friend from years past that I haven't seen in a long time, Brother Cheryl Orvin and his lovely wife. I uh, did not know. That's twice his name has been called today. Right. But he would say, give all the glory to that name that's above every name, the name of Jesus. Amen. But it's a joy to see you, Brother Cheryl, and your wife. And thank you for your years of service to World Missions Ministries and to the body of Christ. And what a heritage you have. He was telling me before the service a little bit about this local church and the preachers that God has raised up out of this church. And what a, what a heritage. What, what a history that you celebrate. But it's good to see nearly a house full today. And so thank you that you're not looking at the future in a rearview mirror, but you're looking 
forward to all that God has in store for you. The best is yet to come. Well, let's take God's word this morning and turn to uh, the New Testament book of 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. And I would like to read verse 15. And then for emphasis, I want to skip down to verse 20 and read verses 20 and 21. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. And I want to speak to you this morning about being useful to God, a vessel of honor for the Lord. Being useful to God, a vessel of honor. So would you stand with me please and let's give reverence to the reading and hearing of God's word from 2 Timothy chapter 2. Uh, verse 15, in this passage of 2 Timothy, Paul is writing about being an approved workman, a, a worker of God. And so though this is men's day, this passage is certainly applicable to all the ladies as well, the brothers and the sisters in Christ. The Apostle Paul says here, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And then if you'll skip down to verse 20, but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, from the dishonor, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified, and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. This is Men's Day here at Oak Grove Pentecostal Holiness Church. And the theme that I've been preaching all year as I travel uh, for events like this is the theme that the Lord laid on my heart for Men's Ministries International in 2023, Useful to God. Where Paul admonishes us in that 21st verse of 2 Timothy 2 to be a vessel for honorable use sanctified, which means set apart as holy, useful to the master, and ready for every good work. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. The words that I've read in your hearing this morning are from 2 Timothy, and 2 Timothy records for us the last words of the Apostle Paul. He's awaiting execution at the hands of Nero in Rome. He knows that the time of his departure is drawing near, and he speaks of that in this second letter to Timothy. And as he is thinking about the churches that God has helped him to plant and the churches that he's given oversight to, as he's thinking in particular about his protege, his son in the faith, his mentee, Timothy, and the fact that he has gone to Ephesus to pastor that church or a network, a cluster of churches that have been planted in that city. He's carrying all these thoughts upon his heart. And I don't pretend or portend to understand everything that Paul may have been thinking as he knew the time of his departure was nearing. But certainly uh, the overarching burden of his heart for his son in the faith, Timothy, and for all these who were being saved and born again and brought into the church of the living God, his heart for them was for them to grasp hold and understand the faithfulness of God and against that backdrop of the fidelity of God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, to recognize the, the need to be faithful unto the one who has called us. And so if I had to choose a theme for the pastoral letters, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, and some would include Philemon, then that theme would be faithfulness. That's the big idea here. In fact, that word faithful is found some 17 times in these three letters of Timothy, 1st and 2nd Timothy and Titus. And he's admonishing Timothy to be faithful to the word of God, to the work of God, the task of the Great Commission, to make disciples of all people groups. And he's admonishing Timothy to be faithful to the people, to the law of priority, God first uh, as a person. And then if you're married uh, to your spouse, and then if you have children uh, as a parent, and then whatever vocational calling you find yourself in, in, that you would be faithful to the one who has called you because he is 
faithful. It was the weeping prophet Jeremiah who looked out over the sun-bleached walls that were broken down in Jerusalem and a city that lay in desolation. And yet he could cry out in Jeremiah 3 uh, and Lamentations rather in 3 and say, Great is thy faithfulness, uh, O God. Is there anybody who woke up this morning uh, recognizing that we serve a faithful God? Uh, faithful is he who has called you who also will do it. He is faithful. And because he is faithful, we are to be like unto him. We are to be faithful to the God who has called us. Joaquin Molina, in his book, What is a Man, says, quote, Faithfulness is the principal attribute of true men. Faithfulness is the cornerstone of masculine character. So out of all the descriptors we could cite for a true, authentic, genuine, bona fide man of God is this capstone, this cornerstone of faithfulness. How important is it? It is so important that the Apostle Paul chooses no less than seven word pictures in this second chapter of 2 Timothy to describe this whole idea of being faithful to God. He talks about being a steward. He talks about being a soldier. He describes the athlete. He talks about the farmer. He speaks of the workman. And he describes the servant. All of those are analogies that men to this day in the 21st century can relate to. But the one we're focusing on this morning is that analogy of the vessel, being a vessel of honor, being useful to the master and ready for every good work. I, I've asked myself, why did the Apostle Paul feel it necessary to go in such detail about being a faithful workman approved unto God? Why did he use all of these different metaphors uh, these seven word pictures uh, I believe it's because he recognized even in that first century embryonic infant church that there was an identity crisis uh, taking place uh, that people were being saved glory to God but many of them had yet to discover their true identity in Jesus uh, who they really were in Christ uh, and so he wants them to understand who we are in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, I find we still have that same identity crisis in the modern contemporary church today that far too few of us as the people of God really know, understand, and appreciate who we are in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, that is the thrust of Paul's writing to the church at Ephesus. What it means to be in Him, in Christ. Uh, and if ever, Pastor, if ever we could grasp uh, this import, this meaning, the significance, of what it means to be in Jesus. Uh, I believe we would have a church house filled with overcoming, conquering Christians uh, who know who they are. The prophet said, the people who do know their God uh, shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Uh, and so I'm summoning the shofar today. I'm sounding the alarm, uh, waking up the mighty men of God and saying, let us not be ignorant of of who we are in Jesus. We are not wimps. We are not weaklings. We are men of God. We know our God. We know who He is. And we know who we are in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no greater honor than to be called a man of God. That message is as important as it's ever been, if not more so. Because I'm... 59 will be 60 in November if the Lord tarries and I live. And I've never seen biblical masculinity under attack and assault to the extent that I see it today. We are now living in what is being referred to as a woke culture. But that woke culture has gone astray from the Word of God. It is as far removed from the divine pattern for male and female as any I've ever known. Who would have thought five years ago, ten years ago, that they would now be over 100 gender classifications? And who would have ever thought that a person would be referred to as a singular in the plural rather than he or she, them or they? 
I read a man's bio the other day. Someone was telling me about this gentleman. I looked him up, read his bio, and his entire bio, rather than saying he served here, he did this, he earned this degree, every pronoun was in the plural. They earned, they served, they did, they are. But it's only one. And so we live in a culture that's confused about basic math. And we live in an hour where there is this gender confusion over who you are. Whether you're a man or a woman or something in between or a mix or a combination thereof. Where are we? We're in Romans chapter 1. You see, when a society rejects, removes, or replaces God, you end up with a culture that is depraved and deceived, delusional and demonic, where the devil, the great instigator, is pulling the strings and creating mass chaos and confusion that unfortunately is often creeping into our churches across the world today. And Paul talks about the false doctrine that was infiltrating the church at Ephesus. I, I didn't take time to read it to you, but he talks about two men in that second chapter of Timothy. Two men who are teaching false doctrine, who are presenting heretical theories, who are postulating vain philosophies, and he describes it as a gangrene. And I just came to remind every man and woman here today that God designed us male and female there may be people confused about who they are today we may live in a culture of persecution and antagonism where even our public school teachers are being fired because they refuse to use plural pronouns as they and them rather than the he and the she but I came to tell you no matter how unpopular it may become God has never been confused about his created order and he's not confused this morning uh, Genesis 1 26 and 27 uh, declares emphatically he made them male and female and they are not the same they are different and that's why our mission in men's ministries is imperative our mission is to call men into authentic manhood on their journey of becoming like Jesus, the perfect man. Men who reject passivity. Men who accept responsibility. Men who lead courageously. And men who expect the greater reward, God's reward. Men who are investing eternally. Real men who will stand and say, I'm not ashamed to be a man of God. I am a man of God. In fact, why doesn't every man here this morning say it with me? I am a man of God. God. And as a man of God, I want to be a vessel to him for honorable use. Set apart is holy, useful to the master, and ready for every good work. I didn't come to beat you up today, men. I didn't come to beat you down. I didn't come to heap condemnation on you. I did not come here this morning to browbeat you and send you out of here in defeat. I've had men say to me, well, I've stopped going to our men's ministries at our church and I've said why they said because every time I went I felt worse when I left than when I came and I said why was that they said because it seemed like they were just always hitting me over the head just brow beating me just tearing me up and 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 they would say and I get beat up like that in the world enough I don't need to come to a men's meeting where they're just gonna beat me down and discourage me and make me feel less than now I came to tell you that he's the potter and we're the clay. I came to tell you that he doesn't throw the clay away. I came to take you to Jeremiah 18 to the potter's house where we read the narrative of how the potter takes a clump of clay and he begins to put it on his potter's wheel and turn the wheel and he molds it and makes it into a vessel of honor. I came to tell you, you and I in and of ourselves are insufficient. We are are weak. We're nobodies and nothings. But I came to tell you I know a man who can take a broken man. I know a man, Jesus, the perfect man who can put you on the potter's wheel and mold you and make you and 
reshape you into a vessel of honor that is sanctified and holy, that is useful to the master and ready for every good work. Why is that important? It's important because spiritual warfare, I believe, is at an all-time high. The voices of the evil one that clamor for our focused attention are ever whispering and at times shouting in our ears. As I've traveled the nation and some overseas, men everywhere have said things like this to me. I don't really feel much of a man these days. I'm stupid. I'll never be a real man. I'm all alone. I I don't matter to anyone. I'm such a failure. I'll never be enough. I'm not worthy of being loved. I'm hopeless. I'm like a dog returning to its vomit. I keep trying to be a man of God, but I just feel like I never quite can attain. Listen to me carefully, sir. When a man believes any of these lies and he lives out of them, he will create internal chaos in his own soul and and external turbulence with everyone around him. His agreement with the lie becomes its own self-fulfilling prophecy, not only making the lie appear more real, but I came to reveal to you the lie for what it is uh, from the pit of hell and to remind you that the devil is the father of all lies. Uh, He's a liar and he's the daddy of all liars. Uh, I came to remind you, sir, of who you are in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I came to tell you what the Bible says. The Word of God says you are a beloved son in John 1 and 12. The Bible says in Romans 8, 17, you are the Father's heir. You're an heir of God and a joint heir of Christ. Everything He has is yours. The Bible says in Ephesians 1 and 3 that you, my brother, have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ. The Bible says, brother, in Matthew 5, 14, you are the light of the world. The Bible says in John 14, 17 that you're the very living quarters of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 you, if you're in Jesus, you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old is gone and the new is come. The Bible says in Romans 8 and 1, there's not any condemnation to you, sir, who are in Christ Jesus. The Bible says in Malachi 3, 17, you're a treasure to the Father. The Bible says in Hebrews 13, 5, you will never be abandoned or left alone because the perfect Son of God has said, I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. The Bible says in Colossians 1, 22, that you are holy and blameless in the eyes of God. I came to tell you, He's the sanctifier. His name is Jehovah M. Kadesh. He's the God who sanctifies. He's the God who sets apart. He's the God who cleanses and makes holy and what he's cleansed let nobody call unclean. I'm so thankful today that he's for me and if he's for me, who can be against me? Sanctification is his part. But you say, what is my part? Well, my part and your part, my brother and sister, is consecration. Sanctification is his part. Consecration is our response to his sanctifying grace and power in our lives. Well, what does that mean? Well, consecration means that we no longer call the shots. We give God veto power. His word is the final word, whether it's Holy Scripture or the Holy Spirit. Either way, it's no longer a selfish spirituality that asks God to serve our purposes. It's all about serving his purposes so that his glory is revealed. It's what a man of God many years ago by the name of Jonathan Edwards said when he was just a college student at Yale University. He said, resolved to live with all my might while I do live. What is he saying? He's saying, my conviction, my resolve is to live for the glory of God as long as I shall live, that I will belong to him like stock in peril withholding nothing uh, from the God who created me and the Savior who, can, who uh, redeemed me. Uh, I am His. You say, but what does that look like practically? Well, I'm glad you asked because I want to give you something practical to take home with you. I want to give you a short prayer. 
And that prayer is simply this, Lord, the answer is yes, even before you ask. I have a deaf daughter. She's my youngest. She's my baby. And she knows fluent sign language, which I do not. I know, like in Spanish, poquito. No muy bien. But I know the sign, in American Sign Language for yes, you take your hand, you form a fist, and you move it up and down like this. And so I want to ask every man, every woman, every teenager, every boy and girl to practice with me today. Yes. And the sign for Lord is an L up at the shoulder and down like he were wearing a sash. Now, that's right. So let's put it together first. Lord, yes. Do you want to be useful to God? Do you want to be a vessel of honor? Do you want to be set apart as holy? Do you want to be ready for every good work? Lord, the answer is yes, even before you ask. And I don't have time to unpack it in your hearing, but I do want to reference Luke chapter 5. I'm not going to read the first 11 verses, but you can read them. It records for us the calling of the first disciples. The apostle Peter and the other fishermen with him. But I do want to point out to you that Luke, who's not only known as a physician, but also as a faithful historian, he is given to detail as any good doctor would be, as any historian would be. And he is careful to say, as it was, as the multitude pressed about Jesus to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. Look at verse 2. And he saw, how many boats did Jesus see? He saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Verse 3, then Jesus got into one of the boats, inferring one of the two boats, which was Simon's. You say, why does that matter? Well, I was reading it. I'm talking about being useful to God, being a vessel of honor. And I never paid attention to that detail until just recently. Jesus saw how many boats? He got into one. He saw two. He got into one. <clears throat> and so as I've been carrying this theme on my heart of being useful to God, and I've read that Jesus saw two. He got into one. I asked myself, had I been there, Pastor Chris, I wonder, would Jesus have gotten into my boat? You say, why is that important? Well, it's important because the boat Jesus got into is the boat the miracle came from. It's the boat with the big fish story because, see, they ended up catching so many fish they had to call for their neighbor boat to come over and help them get that huge drought of fish. The boat Jesus got into is the boat that experienced the miracle. Boat number two was the one that wasn't chosen. Peter received the miracle. The other boat received the overflow. The other boat did not have Jesus preach from it. The other boat did not have Jesus challenge them. The other boat did not hear the commands of Jesus. The other boat did not have their own fish story. They had a second hand story. And, and let me tell you, there's not anything wrong with overflow. I'm, I'm the beneficiary of overflow. My, my great, great grandfather on my mother's side, M.S. Paramore, was a pioneer church planter preacher in the Pentecostal Holiness Church. Uh, I have preached revivals in churches in eastern North Carolina and then later discovered he planted that church. Uh, I had praying grandparents and uh, praying parents uh, and a godly mother who's still with me, 82 years of age uh, and a godly father, 84. They are praying people of faith. Uh, I have a rich heritage. Uh, I know something about the, the beauty of overflow but I came to tell you this morning uh, that I don't want to settle for the overflow. I don't want to settle 
settle for a second hand revelation I don't want to settle for somebody else's fish story I don't want to just tell somebody about how God worked in my parents life and my grandparents life and my great grandparents life I want a first hand revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ myself I want God to choose me I want God to pick my boat I want God to pick my family I want God to use Tammy and me for his glory I want him to use my children and my grandchildren for his glory I'm tired of telling other people's fish stories I'm tired of getting to experience other people's obedience I hear the Holy Spirit saying it's time for me to go deeper with God it's time for me to hear God with my own ears I came to tell you listen there are always two boats ready but it's up to you it's up to you to say Lord use my boat Lord use my vessel choose me oh God make me a vessel of honor for your glory help us to bring our vessels not a few but to bring them to you today Lord and that you would sanctify and fill us with the Holy Spirit and send us forth in the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost to be the man of God and the woman of God that you've called us to be. And so as you stand to your feet and as a musician returns, I just want to leave some nuggets with you this morning. Pastor Chris can take these and develop them if he feels led. But in Luke chapter 5, in those 11 verses, you find five characteristics of a true disciple of Jesus of a man or a woman of God who is useful to the master. Disciples love to hear the word of God. They build their lives on this book. His word is not stale. It's not this morning's newspaper. His word is living and abides and remains forever. Disciples obey Jesus even when it doesn't make sense. Peter said, Lord, we fished all night and we've caught nothing but nevertheless at your word we'll let down the nets disciples are always aware of their own sinfulness Peter fell down and he said to Jesus depart from me for I am a sinner I'm not worthy of this this manifest holiness that has put on display today they are aware of their own sinfulness They want to be fishers of men because Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And they're willing to forsake all and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. How do I know that really is in my heart? Well, it all begins with you offering up to him from your heart this sincere prayer. Lord, the answer is yes. Even before... You ask, whatever it is, whatever it involves, wherever it leads me, whatever the task, Lord, the answer is yes, even before you ask. I wonder, are there any men here today who would dare to pray that prayer with me? Who would dare to say anything you ask, Lord? I'll do it. It's, it's, it's what Isaiah said to the Lord when he said, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who, who will go for us? Whom shall we send? Who will go for us? And Isaiah said, Here am I, Lord. You could send me. What about it? Men, men of God, would you step out today? Would you join me? Would you come to the front? I want to pray over you as a men's ministry. Would you step out? Would you say, Lord, the answer is yes even before you ask the answer is yes lord whatsoever whensoever whomsoever wheresoever howsoever lord the answer is yes the answer is yes even before you ask once these men get up here i want to ask if these men have a wife here Would you come and stand with your husband? Would you come? Would you stand with him? Would you come praying this prayer? Lord, the answer is yes. Even 
before you ask. If you're here this morning and you've never invited Christ into your life, but today's the day of salvation. Now's the accepted time. I want to invite you to come and say yes to Him. The yes of salvation that begins a whole new life of walking with the Lord Jesus Christ. The answer is yes. Even before you ask. Amen. 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 Father, I thank you for these men and these women. I thank you for these who have stepped out today and said, Lord, the answer is yes, even before you ask. Lord, here am I. Send me for your glory. Use me for your honor. Make me a vessel of honor that is useful for the master, set apart as holy and ready for every good work. I pray that you'll cleanse our hearts and cleanse our hands. I pray that we will leave here today encouraged, build up in our most holy faith, knowing who we are, that we are men of God, that we are men set apart as holy, men who are ready for the master's assignment, ready for every good work. Oh, that our hands will not be idle, that our feet will not be lazy, that our hearts will not be indifferent and our minds will not be belligerent, uh, but we will say yes to you. Yes in our soul and yes in our spirit and yes with our physical being. Uh, yes, body, soul, and spirit. We belong to you. And we ask you today, Jehovah M. Kadesh, to sanctify, set apart, make us holy and useful vessels of honor in your kingdom. God, I thank you in advance for the report of the Lord that shall sound from the Oak Grove Pentecostal Hall in his church for awakening and revival taking place, both male and female, but especially among the men of this church, oh God. Men who not will not take a back seat. Men who will not have an idea and a mentality that this is a woman's sport uh, and they leave it to the wife and the mother, but they'll step up and take the lead and be the priest in their home and be the spiritual leader in their community. Thank you, oh God, that everything changes when men get mobilized for God. Everything changes in a church. Everything changes in a community when the men of God take their rightful place in the house of God. And so I thank you for doing it right here in the Oak Grove Pentecostal Holiness Church. I bless this pastor, Chris, and his wife, Crystal. I bless their family, their children in Jesus' name. I bless this congregation today, and I thank you in advance for hearing and answering this prayer offered in faith in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Now, all this week as you pray, among your prayers are going to be which one? This prayer that says what? You got it? You got it, brother? Lord? Lord, the answer is yes. Even before you ask. If I was with my Latino brothers, Hispanic brothers, it would be, si, senor. Si, senor. Si, senor. Amen. Pastor Chris, I'll turn it back to you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful word that we received today. Amen. Praise God, praise God. You can go ahead and return to your seats if you like, but we're just, we're, we're going to, um, you know what, I want to sing that chorus just one more time if we can. I know we're getting ready to dismiss, but the dwelling place of God is not this building. It's not this sanctuary. This is the temple in which he wishes to dwell. So as we close out service today, I want us to do something a little bit different. I want us to sing this. Just put your hand on your, on your chest and just say, Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place, in us, to do the work that you want to do. We will be obedient. We will, do, we will say yes, Lord, before you even ask. But let's welcome him into this place as we get ready to leave this house today. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent.
omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome in this place. Just one more time, if you would, today. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome in this place. Father, as we close out this service today, Lord, we thank you and praise you for the wonderful word that was brought forth with such authority and with such excitement, God. And Lord, we pray that we will be the, not only the men that you have called us to be, that we will fulfill the office that you have called us to fulfill as the heads of our households, as the protectors of our families, the providers of our families, the spiritual priests of the households. But God, I pray that you will touch our women and that you will touch our, our children. God, that they will step up into the roles that you have called them to as well. Because Father, you have organized this and you have put everything in place because you are a God of order. And because everything in our families, we will see uh, um, amazing and incredible things happen in our families as we model our families the way that you have ordered us to do so and god i pray that you'll give us strength to be able to live up to everything that we're needing to live up to lord our answer is yes before you even ask it doesn't matter how hard the task it doesn't matter how incredible it may seem father we will say yes because we live for you and we live in you and not for ourselves i pray that you will dismiss us from this place but never from your presence and let us always give you glory and praise and honor in all that we do. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here today. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. We'll see you in the sanctuary on Wednesday.